Some people think Power World Hard Mode is hard. You don't do enough damage, the enemy does too much damage, it's poorly designed and inconvenient and unfair and blah blah blah. So in this video, I put the complainers in their place. I beat Power World Hard Mode, but there were a few extra rules to make it even harder. 5x damage to players, no leveling HP ever, no mods, only the worst armor is allowed. I also did this with no condensing pals, and no breeding. That's right, Zoe, Lily, Axel, Marcus, and even this guy. I beat all of them. I even managed to get all five legendary pals, and I never had the level past 45. So how did this playthrough go? Was it actually hard? You'll have to see. But one thing I will say, I died a lot, and I mean a lot. <laughs> This is Pal World, for me at least. In the previous two episodes, I took down Zoe, Lily, and Axel, three of the five tower bosses, so Marcus was next on my plate. Surely, I'd need a huge amount of prep and practice and figuring out how he works and... Oh, he's dead. See, Marcus isn't the real show here, and if all you care about is how I took down Victor, then you can skip to this timestamp below. For those of you who want the full experience, here's how Marcus went. He's not much stronger than Axel and Orserk. However, there were a couple of unique problems I had to figure out for this fight. First, I didn't have many good water pals, and I'm allergic to grinding levels. My best option was the Alpha Jormantide that I captured to try to help me get Anubis last episode. But using this pal in particular comes with a few complications. For one, he's huge. And that size really matters. He can't even fit behind the pillars in the boss room. He always tries to back away from enemies that he's fighting. And sometimes, he'll just get stuck and stop doing anything. Come on, Jormantide, what are you doing? The second problem is that Jormantide takes a lot of damage from Phalaris. And not just from the lightning moves that it has, but also the fire moves and ground moves. And it's not like I can just get another Jormantide and swap them out. I needed multiple Kelpsies to increase Jormantide's damage with their special ability. But truthfully, this is all just a skill issue. Ah, uh, this attempt's over. And that's my favorite kind of issue. I'm just gonna let him kill me. Ah! It's something I can solve by just doing a better job and being better at the fight. So I threw myself at the problem over and over. I learned to position Jormantide in specific parts of the room, I withdrew him from every major attack, and I kept a vigilant watch to make sure he wasn't getting stuck. Man, can you stop? Marcus went down after several attempts. This kind of graph is a good example of the problem being me and not my pal. This was day 12 of me recording footage for this playthrough, but I did accomplish one more thing before I logged off for the day. I bet you thought I was just going to catch it there, didn't you? But bear with me for a moment. I have a plan. I don't want to rely on luck. As you can see, the first tick is a 1.83% chance of success. The second tick is a 15% chance. I like those odds. We'll get to why later on. Catching Jetragon was just a matter of statistics. I put the timestamp where I explained some of that math below. After 19 attempts, I got him. That's right. At level 39, I got Jetragon. I upgraded my new Jetragon stats by 21% and immediately attempted Victor and Shadowbeak. Since he's a dragon type, he's a great pal for this fight. I lost, of course, but I didn't really expect to win. I calculated my damage per minute to be about 8400. This is far below the 20,000 that I needed. But I was level 39, and usually people don't fight Victor until level 50, so I decided to try the fight again later. It was now day 13. This is the start of the grind. I don't like grinding, but that's what they make me do to level up in this game. And you have to go after stronger and stronger pals. I couldn't just chuck a ball at random pals, right? 
right? I actually figured I could. I crafted a hundred gigaspheres. At this point, they're pretty easy to make, and I just ran around mass catching pals by tossing gigaspheres at their backs. I caught dig toys and hangus and sweepas and fuddlers and dumuds and swees. We don't talk about the swees. This shit is unfair, man. What the fuck? And most of the time, I would either throw a ball at them normally, or just shoot them a few times to weaken them. I'd clear out syndicate bases and free rare pals, like this Nox, and this Nox too. I even went back to the Wildlife Sanctuary 1 to capture Agtherdir Terras and Azerobes. I constructed new buildings as I unlocked them. Organized crime, mistreatment of pals, I don't want to think about all that, I'm just grilling. By the end of day 13, I was level 42, and it was time for another attempt at victory and Shadowbeak. I lost, again, of course. And honestly, I was a little disappointed in the numbers. My damage per minute here had only gone up to 11,300, an increase of about 34%. Nothing else had changed except gaining three levels. So I set my sights on level 45 and resumed the grind. Day 14 saw me catching a lot more pals. Kelpsy Ignises, Flambells, Arsoxes, Lee's Punk Ignis, Hell Zephyrs, Woolly Pops, Bron Cherries, Dolt Hog Crisps, Serpents. So many deaths to Serpents. I'm getting really tired of these guys. And I even managed to hatch a Jormantide Ignis from a random egg that I found, which was cool for about five minutes until I looked up his IVs. That's gross. At level 43, you can craft a Hyper Shield the strongest shield in the game. After I made it and threw it on, I had an interesting moment of reflection. This shield was over double my base HP. Could I still justify using it in this run? What if it saved me from an attack? Well, it can't. Not really. I only recorded a handful of hits from low-level pals that didn't immediately break the shield, such as this attack from a level 14 Wooly Pop. I figured as long as the shield always broke in one hit, it didn't matter which shield I used. Damage didn't carry over from a broken shield anyway. I hit level 44 and I crafted a pump action shotgun. I caught Patalias and Elphidrans. And hold up, this Elphidran was seriously annoying. Just look at this shit. Oh, that was horrible. Grizzbolts and Maus and Kilimaris, and I did a few cool trick shots on Nightwings. Oh god damn it, I thought that was gonna work. The final pal that I needed to hit level 45 was a Quiver, which I caught with a straight ball to its back while it was sleeping. At the end of day 14, I was level 45, and just like before, I tried Victor and Shadowbeak again. I lost badly. 11,600 damage per minute. Whatever damage bonus I was getting from leveling up was not enough, which meant it was time to stop leveling. Truthfully, I was really skeptical of this number, and I was supposed to beat this guy now? For the first time in my entire playthrough, I looked up some guides on the internet, but everyone seemed to be fighting Victor with rocket launchers or perfectly bred pals. I didn't have any of that. Firefox, my special boy. You might not be number one in anything, but you're number one in my heart. Although Jeff is stiff competition, you better step it up, boy. On day 15, I taught my Jetragon Dragon Cannon. One thing I learned from the Marcus and Phalaris fight was how valuable the two CT moves are for having a higher damage output. Your pal constantly uses these attacks, and they do decent damage. His other two moves are very high burst damage attacks. But Jetragon alone couldn't win this fight. I crafted an assault rifle, which Okay, let's take a quick break. In like a couple of seconds, I just described two things that took me nearly an hour to do. I had to run around grabbing moves from those move trees so that I could get the right one for Jetragon, and I spent 17 minutes running around killing Mamorest Crists for Pal Oil. This is kind of the pattern for this game, and I was getting sick of it. So now that I have an assault rifle, I tested it out, and there's only one way that I know how. I am in touch with my ancestors, providing food for my family in a natural way. Don't you get a witness. Yeah, uh, uh, he had a gun. But the gun isn't enough. I also need ammo. The assault rifle fires very quickly and consumes a lot of ammunition. I figured I'd need about a thousand for the victor fight. To make all those rounds, I'd need all of these materials. That's a lot of gathering. Every time I attempted victor, I'd have to do that grind. So I did what I consider to be my first serious attempt at Shadowbeak and Victor. I went into this fight fully committed to victory, and it was a miserable fucking failure. Four and a half minutes in and my ammo ran out, but that wasn't even the real problem. My damage per minute was way too low. Even if I didn't run out of ammo, I still would have lost. 
Could I improve Jetragon? I already did before this fight. He's at plus 30% attack and defense. Jetragon is an insanely powerful pal, and I would be a fool to think that I could replace him without breeding some crazy optimized monstrosity. So I had to do more damage myself. The assault rifle wasn't going to cut it. Now, I had gone around killing and capturing Alpha Pals occasionally when I got bored. I got Beacon, and Bronze Cherry Aqua, and Elphadran, and Felbat, and Mossanda Lux, and Pen King, and Warsect, and Univolt, and Astagon. But the one that mattered was the Alpha Suzaku. Check this out. Pump action shotgun schematic 4, are you serious? Oh man. Okay. A legendary pump action shotgun. It was the only possibility I had to do more damage than my assault rifle, but I was pretty demoralized after my failure at Victor. I needed a distraction. It was time to catch the rest of the legendaries. So I went through the extreme hassle of crafting a hundred legendary spheres. It required a lot of materials, but the real grind was the weight. It took my artisan Suzaku two hours to craft 500 palmetto ingots, and then I had to spend another 30 minutes making the 100 legendary spheres. During this long time period waiting, I set up a new base in a mining location that was near a bunch of coal and ore. I wound up dismantling the old mining base by the Chalet, and I ended day 15 there. I hardly know what to do with myself now. Spent like this whole day just gathering crap. Days 13, 14, and 15 were largely just catching pals, gathering, and crafting. On day 16, I started testing out a strategy for making money that I learned on the internet. If you build a base here and attack the marketeer, your pals will quickly kill the marketeer and you can loot several thousand gold. For me, it dropped between five and 7,000 gold per kill. The reason why this is especially fast is because you can just teleport away and then teleport back and kill him again. Using this method, it, it took barely any time at all before I had plenty of money, enough to buy all the pal oil I needed. I also had a decent amount of coal and iron stocked up. I made the legendary shotgun, and figured if I needed ammo for it, I could farm more gold and buy the ammo from a trader. Since I already had a Chetragon, the first legendary I went after was a Frostallion, and I learned really quickly that this was not going to be simple. Both myself and my pals could barely damage this guy, but one thing I noticed right away was how much burning him chunked his health. I had an idea. For the first time ever, I unlocked the fire crossbow technology and made myself some fire arrows. My strategy was simple. I walked up behind it, chucked a ball at its back to aggro it, but also keep it away from me, and then I flew up to a nearby cliff to shoot fire arrows at it from a safe distance. One major issue that I noticed right away was that while the first two arrows set the Frostallion on fire, it took four arrows to set it on fire a second time. The pattern continues, and upon review of my footage, appears to be 2, 4, 7, 14, and then 26 arrows to set the pal on fire. However, before I had the chance to properly whittle down the Frostallion's health and test the fire arrows more, this happened. I'm actually a little unhappy about that. I wanted to test my theory! Okay, why does this keep happening to me? Mamorest, Anubis, the Jetragon, and now Frostallion. I'd like to use math to demonstrate that the luck isn't really that extreme. Go to this timestamp below if you're allergic to mathematics. I'm going to employ something called the binomial distribution to show what's going on with these catches, using Jetragon and Frostallion as examples. This is actually a super simplified application of the same kind of math that was used to catch Dream cheating in a Minecraft speedrun several years ago. I went after Jetragon with 88 Ultra Sears in my inventory, and I caught him after 19. There was a 1.83% chance and then a 15% chance to catch him. This is a 0.27% chance, or about a 1 in 370 chance with every ball. What a binomial distribution does is tell us, if we have a percent chance of succeeding, and we attempt this a certain number of times, how likely are we to succeed on a particular number of those attempts? Crunching these numbers, that meant if I used all 88 balls, I had about a 21% chance of catching Jetragon, or about 1 in 
five. I succeeded after 19 attempts. The likelihood of this occurring was about 5%. I wasn't really going for an RNG catch on Frostallion, but remember my strategy for setting up the fight relied on me throwing a ball at it. Overall, I threw 11 balls at it. The first tick was 0.31%, and the second tick was 10%, for an overall probability of 0.031%. With 11 attempts to catch it, not that I really intended to catch it, that brings my probability up to 0.34%, or about a 1 in 300 chance. Lucky, but not overly so. Anyway, back to the game. The only two legendaries left to catch were Palladius and Necromus. I went into them intending to continue testing my crossbow idea, when a better idea sort of fell in my lap. I have one of those moments where like, you know, like you look at someone and you're thinking like, are you thinking what I'm thinking right now? And then, and then you do it. Cause I can't help but wonder if this is gonna work. Oh, they're not running away. It was chaos, but it was effective chaos. Despite my own pals dying left and right, I was able to whittle down both Nicomus and Palladius' health to acceptable levels to capture with my legendary spheres. It still took several balls, but it was pretty damn easy to do. And that's one of the major objectives of this challenge complete, right? I'm not forgetting anyone, right? Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, I wound up catching a second Jetragon for reasons that will be explained later. That was so much easier. Man, f*** math. And I increased the second Jetragon stats to 21%. It was time to work on Victor. If my problem was not doing enough damage, then I needed to do more damage. There were no Doomuds or Kelpsy equivalents for Dragon Pals. The Jetragon was fine. There was little I could do to improve it. This meant that the fight was not working out for me because I wasn't doing enough damage. So I needed to work on me. I identified three major issues with this fight. Dealing 20,000 damage per minute. Keeping Jetragon alive the entire time. Staying alive. I had to solve all three of these issues to win. So I got creative about doing damage. At the start of every fight, I would shoot Victor with two poison arrows. Poison is percent based, dealing about 0.1% of his health and damage about once per second for about 20 seconds. I don't know if this is exact, but it's pretty close. Once the first set of poison wore off, I'd shoot Victor with four more arrows and then stop using my poison crossbow. The poison alone would account for nearly 8,000 damage within the first minute of the fight. One thing I immediately noticed in these early attempts was that Jetragon's skills would actually set Victor and Shadow on fire, dealing 220 damage per tick. So I opted to use a poison crossbow only instead of both a poison and fire mm -hmm. crossbow. The more damage that I can do to Victor in the early part of the fight, the easier the fight will be. If I can do 30,000 damage in the first minute of the fight, then I only need to do about 18,900 damage per minute for the rest of the fight. That means hunting Ikthodirs to make Locomocos for the 20% damage buff. That means bringing Gobvins to boost my personal damage output. The highest damage value I recorded for the first minute of the fight was 33,596 damage, meaning I only had to deal 18,600 damage per minute for the rest of the fight. But what did I do for the rest of the fight? The rest of the time, I was right up next to Victor and Shadowbeak, shooting them with my legendary shotgun. The reason my character is jittering so much is because I had to repeatedly click my left mouse button. It's about as fast as holding down the right button and shooting, but it gave me the ability to move at full speed and didn't move around my camera. But no matter what I did, even if I kept on target in terms of damage output, Jetragon had to stay alive. Keeping damage up meant not recalling him from any attacks, and he couldn't last for 10 whole minutes. So what do I do about that? A second Jetragon. That's what I did about that. I fittingly named them Jetrag 1 and Jet 2 Gon. Victor is not an easy fight to do at close range. He had several movements that could come out quickly to punish me, including Icicle Cutter, which barely had any wind-up, Ice Missile, which had really good tracking, and Blizzard Spike, which was notoriously hard to dodge. I had no choice but to get good. So I did the fight, over and over again. I'd farm gold to make sure I could buy more than 400 shotgun shells, I'd feed some Ikthrodir Locomocos to me and my two Jetragons, I'd get into the fight, poison Victor, poison him again and stick as close to him as possible, shooting him with my legendary shotgun. After 15 attempts, I was weary and beaten down, but not broken. I went in one more time, knowing that in all likelihood this would not be my last attempt. This is how it went.
that's my gob bit. Oh my god, it's a very familiar. That was probably the hardest thing I've done in this game. I beat Victor, the last tower boss. I was level 45 with 500 base HP, 200 stamina, and 140 base attack. I had a legendary pump action shotgun, a poison crossbow, two jetragons, two gob fins, a gale claw, and a damn good plan. The challenge was over. I won. Without ever leveling HP, without ever condensing any pals, without ever breeding, I even got all the legendaries. Wait, what the hell is this? Well, it was a bit anticlimactic, but actually the last thing I did in this run was I bred Jeff, my Hell's Zephyr, with that Frostallion to make a Frostallion knocked. The miracle of life. Jeff, you're gonna be a father. It was the first and only breeding attempt that I did. It's gonna take seven and a half hours? Are you kidding me? I stuck his ass in a cage.